Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need you to move, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We need you to move on our doubt, oh God. We need you to move on our fears, oh God. Hallelujah. We need you to move on our anxieties, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Your word says in your presence, oh God, it cannot live if it is not according to your will, oh God. Hallelujah. If you did not ordain it, if you did not call it forward, oh God, if you did not breathe your life into it, oh God, in your presence it cannot live, oh God. So our sins cannot live, oh God. Our addictions cannot live, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our sicknesses cannot, cannot live, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we have made up our minds, oh God, to stand in the gap and to be in your presence, oh God. We have made up in our minds, oh God, to live by your spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. So we call forth those things which aren't, oh God, as those they were, oh God. Hallelujah. According to your word, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cast down every stronghold, oh God. Hallelujah. We cast down, oh God, every force of darkness, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We cast it down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It must flee. It must go. Hallelujah. 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 Your spirit lives inside of us, oh God. Your spirit lives inside of us, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 So we call forth your spirit, oh God, to rise up inside of us, oh God. Hallelujah. To remove all that is not of you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we surrender to your will and to your way right now, oh God. We surrender, oh God. Hallelujah. To your word, oh God. We surrender to your promises, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We surrender, oh God. In the midst of the fire, oh God. Hallelujah. In the midnight hour, oh God. We surrender, oh God. Hallelujah. No matter how bad the circumstances are, oh God. We surrender, oh God. Hallelujah. We lift up our hands, oh God. And we surrender with our praise, oh God. We surrender with our praise, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We surrender, oh God. We surrender, oh God. Hallelujah. We surrender to you right now, oh God. We surrender to you right now, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We surrender right now to you, oh God. We surrender to you right now, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We lift our hands and praise, oh God. Hallelujah, because that is our, our, our final prayer, oh God. Our final cry out, oh God. Hallelujah is our praise and our worship, oh God. When all hope seems lost, oh God. Hallelujah, when the doctors, oh God, have given us hours and days to live, oh God. Hallelujah, we cry out to you, oh God, because you are the Alpha and the Omega, oh God. Hallelujah, you are the very life, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 we worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, we worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Humble us, oh God. Humble us, oh God, according to your word, oh God. Remove our pride, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remove our pride, oh God. So that you can move in and through us, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah, we need you to move, oh God. Hallelujah, but anything that is in us, oh God. Hallelujah, that is hindering, oh God, a move of you, oh God. Hallelujah, anything, oh God. Hallelujah, that is hindering us, oh God, from walking into the fullness, oh God, of everything that you have placed in front of us, oh God. Remove it, oh God. Remove it, oh God. Remove it, oh God. Right now in the name of Jesus, so oh God. Hallelujah, let your spirit burn with fire inside of us, so oh God. Let your word burn with fire inside of us, so oh God. Hallelujah, 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 because we cannot let sin reign in our mortal bodies anymore, oh God. We cannot succumb, oh God, hallelujah, to the very thing that you have told us to walk away from, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need your, your, your word and your spirit to burn inside of us like a fire, oh God, burning and purifying anything, oh God. Hallelujah, that is not of you, oh God. Anything that cannot live, oh God, in your, in your presence, oh God. We need you to remove it out of us right now, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All of our hurts, oh God, all of our letdowns, oh God, hallelujah. All of our past relationships, oh God, hallelujah. All of our past regret, regrets, oh God, hallelujah. Remove it, oh God, remove it, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have called us to be new creations, oh God. Hallelujah. You have called us to be transformed, oh God, in the renewing of our mind, oh God. Hallelujah. Your word lives inside of us, oh God. Your word is in, inside of us, oh God. Hallelujah. We are constantly taking it in, oh God. We are constantly regurgitating your word, oh God. But uh, hallelujah, we need your word, oh God, to begin to come alive, oh God, by your spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. We need that transformation, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, because we need your word, oh God, to not come back void, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We need your word, oh God, to come alive and out of us, oh God, because people need to be set free and delivered, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We need you, oh God to burn like a fire inside of us, oh God. Hallelujah, just like you did back in the book of Acts, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Just as you moved in the book of Acts, oh God, we need you to move today, oh God. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forever, oh God. Your ways never change, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, your ways never change, oh God. Hallelujah, you are the only thing, oh God, that has withstood the test of time, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need you to move right now, oh God. We need you to move right now, oh God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We need you to move right now, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 We need you to move right now, oh God, because someone is feeling hopeless right now, oh God. Someone is feeling lost, oh God. Someone needs your love, oh God. And we need you to move, oh God. They need you to move, oh God, on their behalf right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We worship you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh God. We need you to move, O oh God. Because there is someone that wants to give up today, O oh God. There is somebody that is ready to call it quits, O oh God. Hallelujah. But you have come so that we might have life, O oh God. Hallelujah. And it is our responsibility, oh God, to intercede, oh God, just as Jesus intercedes for us, oh God. So we intercede on their behalf right now, oh God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we send forth your peace and your love, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that you would engulf them, oh God. Hallelujah. Engulf them, oh God, with your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way, oh God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Move right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Move right now, oh God. Hallelujah. Move right now, oh God. Move right now, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We need you to move right now, oh God. We need your healing, oh God. We need your healing, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We know your grace is sufficient for us, oh God. Hallelujah. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Move in this place right now, oh God. Move in this place right now, oh God. Move in this place right now, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way in this place right now, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, oh God. Bless your holy name, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, move, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless your holy name, oh God. Hallelujah, break, break chains today, oh God. Hallelujah, break chains today, oh God. Break bondages today, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Let, let your healing power, oh God, flow through people, oh God. Flow through your people, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. According to your word, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 We bless your holy name, oh God. We bless your holy name, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 As the Spirit is moving, reach out and grab a hold of, what it, of whatever it is that you are believing God for. Hallelujah. Reach out and grab it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your healing, your provision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reach out and grab it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Do not lose hope on what you are praying and believing God to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because as me and my mom were praying this week, the Spirit began to put in, 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 into, into my mind all of the times where God always shows up late. God always shows up late, but it's his time, so he's always on time. God always shows up late, but he always on, but he's always on time. Meaning that if you look at it, Lazarus was in the tomb three days. God showed up. 
Darius' daughter had died. But God showed up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is the one thing that got me through this week is knowing that God is going to show up. The Hebrew boys were already in the fire. But then there was the fourth. God is going to show up. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about your doubt. He cares about how much you are holding on to the promise that he told you. He said the, the faith of a mustard seed. There's a reason a mustard seed is very small. But Jesus said it can move mountains. God is going to move on your behalf. That is the promise of his word. So hold fast to that promise. Because God is not a man that he can lie. Hallelujah. So let's hold on to let's let's hold on to his promise. Hallelujah. On what he told you and what you've been praying and asking him for. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, give God some praise in here. He's worthy of all the praise. He's all the glory. Hallelujah. We just, last week we was the uh, ultimate spectator sport, as they call it. The game, everybody knows what I'm talking about, right? The Super Bowl. 110 million people watch the Super Bowl worldwide, but the Super Bowl is only a spectator sport. Meaning not, none of you guys played Sunday, right? None of you guys were out there. So we were watching if you were, if you were one of those that wanted to watch. But in the house of God, we're not spectators, amen? We're participants. He's called us kings and priests. So we are supposed to offer praise and worship unto him in Jesus' name. Amen? So clap your hands, sing along with us, stand up, whatever you want, however you want to express your, your praise to God. You're welcome to do it here. Amen? Amen.
for the battle has been won. Jesus said it's already done, so you just hold on to Jesus Christ. Whatever the problem, it'll be all right. You just stand on the word of Christ. And I know right now, it'll be all right. Let me say that verse again. Listen. Many times in this life, we have to wait. But be sure, Jesus, he's never, he's never too late. Because this is what you have to do. You just strap on your faith shoes. And remember, you can't lose. For the battle has been won. And Jesus said it's already done. So you just hold on to Jesus Christ. No matter what the problem might be. Give him a hand. If you know he always comes through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. direction when I see no way. That's why I love I you. Love you so. New mercies you give me every day. And That's why I love you so. Lord, you do what no one else can do. That's why 
such a great God. He's a wonderful God. things you do. You're the beginning and the end. You're the peace I find within. You're a great God. You are great. You're a great God. You are great. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He's the reason why I sing. His name Chain. You're a great God. You are great. You're a great God. You are great. That's why we call you way, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Jesus is amazing. Jesus is amazing. He's so great. Jesus is amazing. He's so great. Jesus is amazing. It's amazing, it's so great. Jesus. 
Jesus is amazing. He's so great. So amazing. So amazing. Jesus, 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 that's why we call you Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sing to the Lord. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come on. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, your glory, God is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, your glory, God is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. in the darkness my god that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are way maker way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are. Come on. You made a way. You made a way. When my back was against the wall, standing here only because you made a you way. made a way you made a way when my back when my backs were against the wall and it looked like and it looked as if it was over you made a way that's why that I'm standing only because you you made, made a way Jesus you made a way we just haven't seen it yet when our backs were against the wall but we don't walk by sight and it looked as if but it we walk was by over. faith you made a way there was 
standing and we're standing here only because you and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you and we're standing here and we're standing here yes we are only because you you move you move mountains come on you cause walls to fall with your power come on jesus but for miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you move mountains because you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you
get ready, 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 get the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Spirit is get ready. ready. He's moving right now. Get, get ready. ready. Can't you feel it? Get ready. Can't you know it? Get ready. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Come on, give him a hand clap. Give him praise. See, when the Lord really moves and you know he's moving, you get kind of happy about it. You get happy because you know that whatever situation you're going through, God is going to work and work it out. And so a praise inside you begins to rise up and you feel good all over. Even though we don't go by what we see or how we feel, we know that God is moving because he loves us so much and it makes us happy inside. Are you happy today? God gives us a joy knowing that regardless of what happens, he is moving and he's working it out. Amen. We better Amen. Come out here now. You may be seated. Give the Lord one more hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God's got a blessing. Amen. And say, with my name on it. With my name. Come on, say it like you mean it. With my name on it. You know, when you say that, that means it's specific only to you. Yes. It's not anybody else's but yours. Amen? Amen. And God knows your name. Amen? Amen? You guys are not convinced that he knows who you are? <laughs> he knows your name. Hello, this is Pastor Harold Franklin, and I wanted to just talk to her going through financially. And they're, you're dealing with maybe your business is slowing down and things around you. Your job has maybe laid you off. But I want to encourage you that don't allow that to dissuade you or persuade you to give up. The Bible says that God will meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Put your trust in God when it comes to your financial situation. God is the provider. His name even means provider. There was the one name he identified himself with, with Abraham, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. So this is a time to pray and ask God, say, God, I don't know what's going to happen with my financial situation. I don't know how I'm going to keep my car, my house, all the things we all go through, but trust God and watch him work. I can tell you many testimonies. I too am a self-employed person and I have to trust God on a day-to-day -day basis to provide clients and to get income from those things. So I have to trust God and I'm just encouraging you, don't be afraid. Fear is always the first thing that you think about. How am I gonna do this? But you don't know how, but God does. So trust him and he'll bring you through. Hello, my name is Precious Franklin. I'm one of the pastors at New Creation Christian Center. And I want to share this verse with you today. Psalm 46, verse 10. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and exalted in all the earth. Today, I want you to remember to be still and know that he's God. Continue just to give him praise and know that he is in control. Hi, I'm Pastor Annis Faye, and I hope our praise and worship was a blessing to you. Our prayer is that it would bless you and bring you a little bit closer to God because God loves you and his desire is for you to have the best, the best kind of love life and that's what we love to sing about is life in Jesus Christ if you don't know Jesus as your Savior would you pray this prayer with me dear God I confess that I am a sinner and that I need you 
and I asked Lord God that you would save me. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. In the name of Jesus, I surrender to you. Save me and forgive me from all of my sins. Now that's just the beginning of having a great life in Christ. Every day, just continue to pray and ask God to draw you closer to him and you will see your life change each and every day. God bless you. I want to share a scripture with you today. Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. Now, this is a scripture that, you know, always has been in my heart, has always been in my mind ever since I've read it. Because many times, just like you, I have plans and I'm like, God, it would be nice if I could do this. God, if, if I could do this. But if I don't go check it with God, I'm missing out on the purpose of this plan. See, many of us, we have plans that, if we can be honest, usually they are selfish in nature. Even if it's good things, sometimes it can be selfish in nature. And we have to say, God, are these plans acceptable to you? It reminds me of when I was in high school, even in college, when you had the counselor you would go to and you would say, hey, this is what I'm trying to get to. These are, this is the course that I'm taking. And they would say, well, you need to make sure you pick up your credits here or you won't be able to graduate on time. Or if you do this, you're fine. It looks like you'll fly with, you'll go through with flying colors, right? They would help you along the way to make sure your plan was still going to be met. That's what we have to do with our plans to God. We have to go to God and say, God, is this a plan that you have for me? I don't know, some of us, we may be uh, tuned in or uh, tuned in to something right now, right? And we have to say, God, is this what you have for me? And I tell you this, it's better when you do it God's way. There's a scripture that says, uh, better, better a little with the righteous than wealth of the wicked. I don't want to be without God. I want to make sure my plans are tuned in to God's plans. I pray this was a blessing to you. Proverbs 19, 21. one so there's no there's no confusion there amen so just know that he's the one that's leading and guiding us into all truth that's what he said his job is right amen so we are going to uh <clears throat> excuse me pick up from where we left off last week for those that don't know what we're talking about we've been talking about 
how confession really is good for the soul. And I know we've all heard that saying, confession is good for the soul. The actual saying, though, I just discovered is open confession is good for the soul. And we, we're trying to lay a biblical foundation for the principle of confession, affirmations, declarations, and proclamations. Because there's always confusing, you know, a lot of people, well, let me pray before I start getting it. I'm going to say, Father, we thank you for the privilege of being here in your presence. You said that you dwell or live in the, you inhabit the praises of your people. So we welcome your presence here. And there's somebody here that needs your presence. They need us. We all need you. There is not just one, but all of us need you. And so, Lord, we need you to give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying at this time and this place and this hour. We also need you to give us a will to do and a heart to understand what it is that you're saying to us. So speak to us, Lord, and use me in the way that you will. But even if I miss something, fill in the blanks because you know all things. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said, amen. And amen. A lot of people, when you say the word confession, they get nervous because they start to, oh, he's talking about name it and claim it and all that kind of stuff. But really, confession is not something that was invented this century. Or, well, actually, it's last century because it was the 19... Hundreds, But confession is something that God told his children from the beginning to do. Amen? Thank you, dear. <clears throat> and if you, uh, we went through some of the passages, God made declarations over Adam and Eve. Amen? One of the declarations were that he told them what they needed to do. Be fruitful and multiply. For, uh, replenish the earth and have dominion over everything that lives on the earth. That's what he pro declared to Adam and Eve. He also declared to them, don't touch the tree that's in the midst of the garden. He made that declaration. And it's also considered a commandment. But in the law... For those that don't know, there's, there's these things called affidavits. How many have ever heard of an affidavit before? An affidavit is a sworn statement that you make under oath and that you can use and present to the court. They also, affidavits in the old days had to be notarized. And so they came up with this other document that's called a declaration that's similar to an affidavit, you just don't have to have it notarized. But it's a, it's a sworn statement, a statement that sworn, you have to swear that it's true. And so everything that God says is a sworn statement of its accuracy and its truth. Amen? Put it this way, the, the word of God is the truth of God. Everybody say that, the word of God is the truth of God. And the truth will do what? Say it like you mean it. The truth will do what? Okay, so if you're not free, what do you need? You need the truth. So anything that's got you tied up, tangled up, confused, you need truth on it. Amen? And the, that's the power of truth. That's the power that God uses to set the captives free. And Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Now, who is the enemy? Who is the enemy? The devil. You might say, well, the enemy is my, no, is not your enemies. He's not just talking about physical enemies. He's talking about 
the ultimate enemy. Amen? He said he gives you power over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt you. So not only does he give us truth, but he also gives us power. And when the enemy steps into a territory that he doesn't belong in, you can now exert your authority over him and tell him to get out. How many remember the statement, uh, your, your home is your castle, or I think it was the old days used to say the, the husband is the king of the castle or something like that, or the, the, the head of the household. If you are the head of the household, guess what you get to do? Make decisions, but you get to get, keep the intruders out. You keep the intruders out. Amen? You guys look like you, I'm, I'm telling you something you never heard before. <laughs> I'm looking at eyes. He, he was, no, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm not asking you trick questions here. I'm just getting you set in your position of authority. Because the reason why we struggle in life is because we don't take up the authority that God has given us to take up. The reason why we are bound by things, it's because we have not exerted the power or used the power that God has given us. And the power is in his word. Jesus, most of the things that Jesus did, he did do some things with natural means, but most of the things that Jesus did were done by words. When he, Mark, Michael was the other Michael, Michael back there. Got a couple Michaels here. Michael was talking about when he came to Lazarus' tomb. You guys know that story, right? And Jesus said to the tomb, or well, he told the people to move the stone, right? And his, his sisters got nervous because she's the, the, you know, he's, he's, they say he stinks, but basically stinks is another word for decomposing. He's decomposing, Lord. So it's not going to be pleasant to open that tomb. He said, look, <laughs> I'm about to raise this guy up. What difference does that make? <laughs> he said, why was that? He says, didn't I tell you if you believe, you will see the glory of God? He said, I'm not worried about how he smells. He could take a bath <laughs> after he gets up, right? But what did he do when he, they opened the tomb? Did he go in there and say, get up, get up, Lazarus, wake up? He just spoke. He just spoke. He said, I, he said, first he said, Father, I thank you that you hear me. And he says, I know you always hear me. He says, but for the sake of everybody around me, I say this, that they, you may, be, they may believe that you have sent me. And after he prayed, that was his only prayer, after that, he demanded, he commanded, he declared what? What did he say? He said, Lazarus, come out of the grave, come forth. And he came out of the grave. He declared the power of God in his situation. He proclaimed God's authority over death. He showed death that you do not master what God says you cannot touch. Are you hearing me? And then let's go back to Luke 10, 19. And he gave you what? Power. power. Say, look at your neighbor and said, he gave me power. Come on, say it like you mean it. He gave me power. See, the, the church struggles, and, and, and obviously I don't know everybody in the church because the church is, according to statistics, about 2.5 to 3 billion people strong. So obviously I don't know everybody in the church. But with observation and light by the Spirit of God, the, truth, the church struggles because of its lack of, of authority and it's not that we lack authority let me let me back up 
The church struggles because it doesn't believe it has authority. And so we, we, we fight battles we don't need to fight because we don't believe that we have the ability to overcome. Jesus says, in this world, you will have what? Tribulation or troubles. You guys remember that when he says that? But what did he say after that? Anybody? Be of good cheer. What happened? I have overcome the world. And where is Jesus? And he's where? Living inside of us. Greater is he. Can he finish that scripture? Than he that is. Say it like you mean. Say greater is he. That is in me. Than he that is in the world. Isn't that authority? Isn't that power? So then why do we act as if we don't have any when situations arise? Did you know that Jesus probably needed money at times? Did you guys know that? There was, there was once, there's a couple of stories in the Bible that say it. And that was the, the tax story. Peter came to him and he said, Jesus, well, no, first let me back up. They asked Peter, he says, does your master pay taxes? Tried to accuse him of that. They were always trying to accuse Jesus of something. Now they want to get him on tax evasion. They got Al Capone and they figured they'd get Jesus too. <laughs> but Jesus looked at Peter knowing, see, that's the thing. Jesus always knew. He says, what's the matter, Peter? He says, who do they take taxes from, the children or the strangers? He says, strangers. He said, but then therefore the children are free. He said, but nevertheless, I want you, this is what I want you to do. Take your fishing pole, which you're so familiar with. And he didn't say the pole, but he says, go fishing. And the first fish you get, open its mouth, and you'll find a piece of money in that fish's mouth. Not just for my taxes, but for yours too. Amen? You might say, well, pastor, do you believe that... G I can go to the lake and pick up a fish and the fish will have a piece of gold in its mouth. If that's what Jesus told you to do, you could. <laughs> but what he promises is that he will do what? Meet all your needs. Everybody say, all my needs according to his riches and in glory by Christ Jesus. So the riches come through Christ. And you might say, well, pastor, that says your needs. Well, okay. But he also says that delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But the, 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 the qualifier is what? Delight yourself in the Lord. Not delight yourself in the mansion. Not delight yourself in the car. Not delight yourself in the six-figure income. But if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. And he has, Solomon is the proof text of that scripture. Because Solomon didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for a palace he didn't ask. He said, Lord, just give me wisdom. And he said, because you didn't ask for this stuff, I'll give you all the other stuff plus wisdom. Didn't he do that? Because he delighted himself in the Lord. And, 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 and Solomon had so much stuff, they had to invent ways to use gold. He had so much gold. We, they start drinking out of gold cups. <laughs> It's like, the, the Bible says in Solomon's day, gold and silver were like nothing because God had blessed him so. But the key is in all this that I'm, I'm laying out to you are the promises that God gives. We are, use the promises as the declarations or the affirmations or the confessions that 
we, we use to see God fulfill what he said he was going to fulfill. How do you get saved? How do you come to Jesus as your Savior? What happens? How do you, how do you get saved? Anybody? Anybody know Romans 10, 9, and 10? You do what? You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And do what? Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And what happens? You shall be saved. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you have to say it. You have to say it. You can believe it, but at some point you have to say it. Because saying is the declaration to the world that you have accepted it. Amen? So we have to say the promises. But this is, this is and let me, I, I did that kind of a, a general outline to kind of bring those that weren't here up to speed. But this is where we want to go for today. So there's really, I've got four things on, on why we use or why we confess, affirm, declare, and proclaim. Four reasons or four things that why we have to do it. Number one, we confess, proclaim, affirm, and declare when we pray. When we pray. See, a lot of people struggle with prayer. How many struggle with prayer? Let's be honest. Let's just be honest. And the reason we struggle is because we don't know how. The, Jesus' disciples spoke for all of us. His Lord, show us how to pray. You guys remember that? They said, show us how to pray like John showed his disciples how to pray. So this is not a new thing. God is still trying to show us how to pray. And he, give us, he gave us the Lord's Prayer. But in the Lord's Prayer are points of emphasis, not necessarily the words, although you can say the words. There's nothing wrong with saying the words. But if you look at the Lord's Prayer, the first thing is praise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, or holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the second thing after praise is his, let the will of God be done in earth. Well, we're created by what? Substance, according to Genesis. God took the earth and he made human beings, right? And then he breathed into them the breath of life, which is, what's, what is the image that we bear that is of him. We don't necessarily look like God physically, but we have his image ingrained in us. Amen? So he says, your will be done. So the, the, the reason why we declare the word when we pray is that is God's will. And uh, second, well, first, was it first John 5, 14 through 15 says, if we ask anything, anybody know that scripture? Put it up there, Michael. If you can grab it. If you ask anything according to his will, what happens? He hears you. Everybody wants God to hear them, right? You don't want to be praying and not know that God. He says, if you ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know. Notice the no's in there. Not the hopes, not the wishes, but we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So that's one of the steps of prayer is to find how, what God wants us to have or to do or to pray for. Let me give you a few scriptural uh, things that you can pray for. Now, this may not apply to some people, but I know when we were, uh, when we first started this study, two of the people in the, in the congregation mentioned that there were two ladies that were trying to have children. 
And all the women said, he ain't talking about me. <laughs> but there are some people that want to have kids, amen? And they're struggling to have children. Amen? So we can go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 says, And God blessed them and said to them, and this is, uh, I don't know how this version got out, but I'm going to just read it anyway. The old King, New King James says, Be fruitful and multiply. And the version that pulled up in mind says, Have many children. So when your family member and, and I don't care what society is trying to tell you. Only women have children. Okay? Uh, we all agree on that, right? Because <laughs> if not, we need to go back to the beginning. But anyway. So we all know that only women have children. So that means when your family member is struggling, you can take this passage of Scripture. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is your will that all married, and, and that, that's the qualifier. I'm not talking about folks out of wedlock, okay? That's another thing we got to get straight. <laughs> I know, well, pastor, are you going to condemn? Look, I, I'm not, all I'm saying is God created us male and female, right? Let's not get that confused. He created a marriage between a man and a woman, Right? And he created a family to be between, be between a husband and a wife and children. That's his created order. You might say, well, what about the broken homes? I'm not talking about what happens. See, there, this is, and this is where we get confused sometimes. God has a standard. Man has never well, I shouldn't say never, hardly ever keeps what God commands. That's what's called sin. Amen? God said also one, one thing is that he says when you get married, you, you're not supposed to get divorced. That was, that's what Jesus said. He said you can, if you commit adultery, you can get out of it. But technically, he says that's not the way it was intended. So the plan of God is for a man and a woman to get married, have children, and stay together until they die. That's the plan. Am I, am I, is that, that's not a new revelation, right? And <clears throat> let me throw this in. You say, Pastor, you're about to step on some toes. That's okay. It's not me stepping. He also says sex is only for marriage. Look at your neighbor. I know if you want to look down and look at him, you can say it. Sex is only for marriage. Come on now, say it like you mean it. Sex is only for marriage. And these are all simple things that God laid out. And was it, but pastor, that ain't the way it is now. And that's why we have 70% of the people raised without fathers in our community. <laughs> we have kids out of control all because of that one command that the, the world doesn't want to keep. Because sex is fun. So, you know, why not? Why you want to hold my fun back? No, we're trying to hold back the tide of destruction that it creates because you won't do what God says do. But back to praying. Everybody say, back to praying. So you lift this promise out of this passage and say, Father, you said that you want our wives to have many children. So Lord, we pray that my sister-in-law, my, bro my brother's wife, so whoever the name is, we pray that they would be fruitful and multiply. Not only pray, we command them to be fruitful and multiply. And you stay on that promise until you see it manifested. That's how you pray. You get a promise and you stay with it until you see God change the circumstance. Now, you, you know, sometimes we like to get into the details. Father, we pray that you would touch her womb and open it up. You know, you, you could say all that. I'm not saying don't. That's up to you. But all you have to do is command her body to obey 
the word. Because we don't pray anything else but the Bible. There's nothing else to pray. Amen? Are you guys with me here? And so this is why people struggle is because they don't know. First, they don't always know what God's will is for them. But secondly, they don't know how to, what the words are they're supposed to pray. Let me give you a couple of other examples. Okay? Say, so help us pray, Lord. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5 through 11. Now, this is one of those books nobody likes to read, right? It's a good story, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if folks say, hey, last time I was reading Nehemiah, I didn't mean No, <laughs> that Nehemiah doesn't always fall at the top of everybody's list. That's all I'm saying. It is a short book, so if you, if you haven't experienced Nehemiah, it's a short book. Amen? And Nehemiah is about the return of the children, the, well, the, the Jewish people. Notice, well, I'm not going to get into that. The Jewish, Judean kin kingdom being returned back to Israel. Okay? And we know that Babylon had come, destroyed the temple, dispersed the Jewish people throughout their empire, and Nehemiah is now in the court of the king of the, that had, the inherited king that had captured them. And this is what he's getting ready to do. So let's go to verse 4. It says, chapter 1, verse 4 says, When I heard this about the people of Jerusalem and about the wall, I sat down and I cried. And I was very sad. I fasted and prayed to the God of heaven for several days. Then I prayed this prayer. <clears throat> he said, Lord God of heaven, you are the great and powerful God. You are the God who keeps his agreement. Let me get out of this version. <laughs> it's not that it's not it's bad or anything. It's just not what I'm used to. And plus the one they show is not the same. So He says, uh, you keep covenant and mercy with those who love you and ob observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant when I pray before you day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess. Everybody say confess. The sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you, both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. So here, here's so he's acknowledging their fault, their faults. Amen. Confession really is good for the soul. Amen. He acknowledges their fault, but then he says, "But remember, I pray, the word that you commanded your servant." Notice he's just reading the the Bible. He says, Moses saying, "If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations." But everybody say, "But." Come on, say, but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the furthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather you, <clears throat> gather them from you there and bring them to the place where I've chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these, your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and your strong hand, O Lord, I pray, please, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who do desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. So he, he's praying what God said. He said, you, if you turn away, <clears throat> excuse me, if you turn away, I'll send you away. But if you turn back, I'll send you back. And that's all he's asking him. He said, Lord, you said if we fall and sin and don't keep your commandments, you're going to scatter us. But you said if we turn back, you're going to send us back. Lord, keep your word. That's how you pray. Keep your word. Your word have I hid in my heart that I'm what? Might not sin against you. My word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the thing in which I sent it to. He's telling Lord, 
Keep your word. You said this, so keep your word. This is how you pray, and this is how you pray, knowing that you're going to be heard. Because you're asking according to the will. How many of us have heard all the years we've been in church, the will of God is in the Say it like you mean. The will of God is in the Bible. <laughs> okay? So then when you pray, what do you reach for when you pray? Well, Lord, I, I'm, here I am, Lord. Uh, this Harold, Harold Franklin, just in case you didn't know who I was. I know I haven't been here in a while. And, and uh, well, you know, Lord, I, you know, that, Okay, you can introduce yourself, but remember, he, know, he knows your name. <laughs> he sees your every fault, and he sees the tears. He knows your name. He knows your address, so you don't have to give him a new introduction every time you show up for prayer. Amen? I don't mean to be belittling, but don't. You can reverence him, but you don't have to introduce yourself like God doesn't know who you are. Amen? He knows who you are. Amen? But you have to be like Nehemiah. Take the word and ask him about his fulfilling his word. That's all we're doing when we pray. Let me give him one more example. Everybody say one more example. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2 through 19. A lot more people know about Daniel than Nehemiah. Say, so is, this, is this helping us? Yes. Say, 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 God has given me power. God has given me power. This is where the power is. This is the power. Amen? It's not what you feel. <laughs> it's not huggable. That's, 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 that's feeling. But this is power. The truth. And what will happen with the truth? It'll set you free because there's power in the truth. What did I say? Uh, Daniel 9, 2 through 19. So this is Daniel. Of course, Daniel 2, this was the same era as Nehemiah. And that's the, sometimes the Bible confuses people because it's not in chronological order. Okay? You guys know that, right? Isaiah was in the era of Hezekiah, okay? So you, when you read the story of Hezekiah, Isaiah is mentioned in the story of Hezekiah. So he lived in that era. He also lived in the era of Manasseh, which was Hezekiah's son, who was desperately wicked. And he was actually the one who killed Isaiah. You know, the Bible says that in the Hebrews chapter 11, many were sawn in two. You remember that passage? He cut Isaiah in half with a saw. That's where that passage comes from. Daniel was a, a contemporary. Now, I don't know if they knew each other, but he was a contemporary of Ezekiel and Nehemiah and Ezra. Esther was in between Nehemiah before they started to go back to Israel. So sometimes that's helpful to put a, a chronological sequence to the prophets. Amen? So Daniel, who is now the, you know, in command under the king, he holds a high position. But he sees something, and this is what he sees. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books, the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord. Everybody say, by the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. Through who? Through what's his name he uses? Jeremiah. Oh, he don't have it up there. I'm sorry. Well, y'all got Bibles? No, anyway. <laughs> Lord, the Lord of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Israel. So what is he telling us? God promised that after 70 years, what could happen? They could go back home. And Daniel said, hey, I, I found the promise. 
I, everybody say, I found the promise. So what does he go do? He says, then I set my face toward the Lord to make requests by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And I prayed to the Lord, my God, and made confessions and made and said, oh, Lord, great and awesome God. Man, this sounds just like Nehemiah, doesn't it? Who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings and our princes, to our fathers and all the people of the land, O Lord. Righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face as it is this day. To the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those near and those far off in all the countries to which you have driven them because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. O Lord, to us belongs shame of face, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belong mercy and forgiveness. Though we have rebelled against you, we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his way, his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yes, all Israel has transgressed your law and has departed as not as, as, so as not to obey your voice. Therefore, the curse and oath written in the law of Moses, everybody say the law of Moses. So you see, the Bible is not just a fairy tale book. He told you this would happen if you do this. And guess what happens? What he said. <laughs> he said, it's, he said, so if you do the right thing, this will happen. We know we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We love that part, but 14, 15 through 67 <laughs> says, cursed in the city. You're cursed in the field. You're cursed when you come and when you go because you don't obey what I say. Amen? So that's what he's rehearsing. And then he goes back and says, um, go back to, let me go down to um, 13. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this disaster has come upon us, yet we have not made our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand your truth. Therefore, the Lord has kept the disaster in mind and brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all the works which he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O Lord, our God, who brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and made yourself a name as it is this day, we have sinned and we have done wickedly. O Lord, incline according to all your righteousness, I pray. Let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of our sins and from the, for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and all your people, are a reproach to all those around us. Now, therefore, our God, hear the prayer of your servant and supplications. Cause your face to shine on your sanctuary, which is desolate. Oh, my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations in the city, which is called by your name. For we are, do not present our supplication before you because of our righteous deeds, but because of your great mercies. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen. And act, do not delay for your na own name, for your own sake, my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. So he's praying, Lord, the 70 years are up. We repent and we ask that you would restore us back. And what happens? They go back. Amen. His prayer was answered. Nehemiah's prayer was answered because they prayed the promise. So when you declare the promise, you have to pray the promise. So one of the uses of declarations, confessions, affirmations is, is in prayer. The second use is to affirm what God has made us and called us to be. Another word, way of saying our identity. Everybody say my identity is in God and what he says about me. See, we're all searching for self-esteem and identity and acceptance and 
We want to be something. We want to be somebody. But he has made you somebody. Amen? He has made you somebody. You don't need to get an A in calculus to be somebody. You don't need a degree in whatever your field of choice is to be somebody. You were somebody when he spoke life into you. Amen? Because you are in his image. Everybody say, I am in the, well, let me back up. I have been made in the image of God. So what more of an image do you need? If you're like him, that's why the temptation of the devil was so mind boggling to me. Because he says to Adam and Eve, who in the first chapter, God said, in the image of God made he them, male and female created he them. And then the devil comes and says, God knows that if you eat this, you'll be like him. But wait a minute, somebody should have raised their hand. Uh, I have a question. Like, like Kiki, I have a question. What's your question, Harold? I'm already like him. That's not a question. No, that's a statement. <laughs> I'm already like him. So what does he have to offer me? <clears throat> Are you hearing me? And he's still making the same offers. Amen. We're falling for the same, as they used to say, okie doke. He's coming up with the same things. If you want popularity... Go and do this. If you want to fit in, go and do this. But we're not called to fit in. We're not called to be like everybody else. And I know that's not a popular thing. My kids used to, <laughs> my kids are grown. Uh, you know, Isaac Marquise is a grown man right now, right? But when they were 10, 12, they would say stuff like this. Well, everybody else has one. And you know what my answer was? Everybody else don't live here. <laughs> Just you live here, and you don't get one, or you don't get to do that. Because we're not basing our life on everybody else. Or are we? TikTok. Everything. I mean, every time I turn around, the kids are doing the same dance. <laughs> and they think that's a unique. It's unique. But let me tell you, we were doing that when we were 20 years old. We did the same dances. <laughs> yeah, she was asking me, Yo, Harold, show I did. Look, I can't do that stuff no more. <laughs> but, I mean, we did the same dances. Oh, Lord, please, yeah, don't, let's just not get started on that. But anyway, so we have this image that God has given unto us. Now, the and this is, this is where all the, the problems in the world fall. is because some say only certain people are made in God's image. But that's not what the Bible says. So I, as no matter, obviously I'm a black man, or as my, my, my youngest grandson said, he's clear. <laughs> He's not black, because he's the, first he was red, and then he became clear. <laughs> but I'm a brown person, and I'm still made in God's image. So I don't care what anybody says to me. What you say doesn't change the truth, because the truth sets you free. I know who I am. And I don't need a degree, a nice car, or money to, to make that determination. I've got to know who I am when I'm broke. <laughs> when I don't have anything. Because when I know who I am, his word will change me into what he wants me to be fully. Amen? So our identity is based in our confession. So let's go to Romans 8, 35 through 39. And we all know this passage, right? We, we know the first part, if God before me, 
Who could be against me? Do you guys ever pray like that? <laughs> when, when somebody is coming against you at your job or coming against you in any setting, do you ever pray that God is for me so nobody can be against me? And I haven't, see, and you have to qualify it. Like, you, you saw what Daniel went through. He confessed the sins, not only of his father's, but his own sin. So you got to make sure your hands are clean. That you didn't cause the trouble you, you're in. Amen? You might say, well, pastor, what if I did call, cause it? He said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So if you caused it, confess it. Get it out. Get it off your account. And then once you clear your account, say, now. Now that we're back in good standing. You know, a lot of people say, well, God, you know, he, his grace covers all, even if you don't confess. Well, that, then why do you tell them to all confess all the time? I mean, in the, in the book of Revelation, he told the church, look, if you don't confess, he said, I'm, I'm going to take your candlestick out. I'm, and the candlestick meant you, you were in his presence. So, you know, we got the once saved, always saved group. But you can always be saved if you always confess. <laughs> You can't just do what you want and then say, and God understands. Yes, he understands. That's why he told you to repent and turn from your wicked ways. So you don't have to suffer the consequences. Now, you might still have to go through natural consequences, but God will lessen that. But let me go to Romans 8, 35 through 39. So I skipped 31 and 32. That was if God before me part. But I want to get to the last part. It says, um, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, everybody say, yet in all these things, we are what? Read it like you mean it. More than a conqueror through him who loves us. Look at your neighbor and say, I am more than a conqueror. What does more than a conqueror mean? That means you conquer when folks can't conquer, but you can. You're winning all the time. You might say, Pastor, I'm not, how come I'm not always winning? Hold the battle. The battle's not over. The battle's not over. But you got to hold on. Um, you got to believe that. And again, it's not you. Just like they all said, I, I hope you paid attention to ne Nehemiah and Daniel's prayer. We don't, it's not us. It's not us. He constantly said this. We're shame of face. That's an old way of saying we're embarrassed by the foolishness that we've in, engaged in. That's what that means. But you, Lord, are righteous. You are holy. You are merciful. And because of your great mercy, where which you loved us, you give us the right to come to you when we mess up everything. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't cast you aside. He just says, come on back. Come on back. Clean it up, but come on back. And he says, you're more than a conqueror. Are you more than a conqueror in your own heart and in your own mind? See, that's where the battle is. Because all of us, we read this, we, yes! We go home and say, they ain't talking about me. <laughs> they don't even know why. If, if they, if, like they say, if they knew who they was talking to, they wouldn't be talking to me. <laughs> that's what some folks say, right? But that's because you don't know the God you serve and what he's done for you. He's made you this. So even if you don't feel like you're more than a conqueror, start to say, God, thank you for making me a conqueror. 
Yeah, more. Let, look, let's just get to conquer one level. <laughs> and then we can get to the more later. <laughs> but let's, let's just conquer. I started this off by saying Luke 10, 19. He has given you power over, everybody say all. All, all the power of the enemy. These passages go together. I'm more than a conqueror. And this is not a cheerleading message. This is a righteousness, how you feel, how God has made you, what he has put inside. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. See, until we really grab a hold of that, and it's not just the words that we say, we won't see our prayers answered. Because we're still on the table of I'm not worthy to receive. Let me, let me sh set the record straight. Oh, man, time's slipping away. I'm sorry. But let me set the record straight. You are not worthy. He is worthy. He's the only one. They said it in the book of Revelation. They looked around for somebody that could open the seals. And the Bible says, and there was nobody worthy. And John started crying. John, Jesus, bosom buzzy. That's, I think that's where we get the phrase bosom buddy from, because John's laying on Jesus' bosom. That was a, bosom was another word for chest for the, the young, young folk. <laughs> My mom used to say bosom all the time. I guess they don't say that anymore. But he said he started crying, but the, the angel said, John, don't cry. Don't worry. Because the lamb is worthy. Hallelujah. Nobody else is worthy, but the lamb is worthy. And because he is worthy, he has made you worthy. Say, he has made me worthy. Say it again. He has made me worthy. Let me read one more passage. This is not even in the, the lesson, but I got to say it because... This goes along with what I just said. Second Chronicles, and then we're going to close chapter, <laughs> chapter 5, verse 20, starting at 20. It says, now, then we are ambassadors. Everybody say we're an ambassador. Yeah. You didn't know you were an ambassador. A person that represents God. For Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And this is the verse I want to get to, 21. For he made him who knew no sin, who's, who is that? Everybody say, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Did I say second? Oh, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. Still in the Old Testament. 20, verse 21, for he, who made, he, he, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, okay, the exchange, that we, everybody say we, we. say I'm part of the we, part of the might become the righteousness of God in him. I'm, 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 this is a pregnant pause, as they say. I want you to get that. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. That's why I said, no, we're not worthy, but he is worthy. And he, according to this passage, has made you worthy. But you didn't earn it. It was by grace are you saved through faith. So now we have this lofty position in God. And so now we have to start acting as if he has transformed us from the wretches that we were to the righteous people that we now have become. Amen? So this is where these, this is why, so this is why it's so important to know what the scripture says. It says now you can go home and say, well, second Corinthians, when the enemy says you're, you're nothing, you're stupid, you're a blockhead, you don't know how to do anything. Your parents were right when they told you you were not going to amount to anything. But then you can pull, a, let me tell you about second Corinthians 521. He said, he made me the righteousness of God. So what do you say about that devil? 
He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What do you say about that? Huh? Well, you can't, you can't read, write, add, strap. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And all things is another Greek word for all. <laughs> you can do it if you want it. Amen? So don't let anybody who has tried to frame you in their image take you out of the image that God made you, which was his. See, our parents, unfortunately, depending on your parents, tried to frame us in their image. But we're not, we are born to them, but we're not everything that they were. Amen? I mean, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't have the experience that my father had. I didn't, nor did he have the experiences that I had. We're all individuals, and I said we were closing, so we're going to close. Praise God. Let's, we'll pick up this. I was almost done, too. Man, I thought I was going to finish today, but we'll, we'll fi finish next week. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word because your word is the difference maker. Without it, we don't have any truth, but in it, we have all the truth we need. So, Lord, help us to pick up your word and not just pick it up, but do like David said. Let us hide your word in our hearts, not only not to sin, but so that we could be what you called us to be. There's so much that have, has been dumped on so many of us that it's hard for us to dig out of the the rubble that's been dumped on us. But you've made us new creations in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So let us put aside everything, everything the enemy used to trip us up, everything we've used to keep ourselves under instead of over, and know that you are making the difference in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings to remembrance all the things that Jesus said. And we thank you for your goodness towards us. And everyone said, Amen. We thank you for listening to today's sermon. And we pray that you are impacted to become the new creation that God desires. We at New Creation Christian Center invite you to come join us for service Saturday at 7 p.m. or Sunday at 11 a.m. located at 5150 South Cloverdale Street, Seattle, Washington. Also, feel free to visit us online at newcreationwa.org. New Creation Christian Center, the path to genuine life, where you can come as you are and be transformed by the Word of God.